Your heart is one of your most vital organs and it pumps blood around your body. This blood travels through the circulatory system, a connection of tunnels made up of arteries, veins and capillaries. Blood delivers oxygen and nutrients around your body. There are three main types of blood vessels that are in your circulatory system. Arteries carry blood with oxygen away from the heart to the blood's tissues. They branch off throughout the body becoming smaller tunnels for the blood to travel through. Capillaries are small, thin blood vessels that connect the arteries and the veins. Veins are blood vessels that take blood back to the heart. The blood inside the veins contains less oxygen than the arteries. Also, it carries waste products that will be removed from your body through your urine or sweat. We've teamed up with researchers at the SFI Research Centre for Medical Devices to learn about the effects of exercise on your heart and blood vessels. To answer all of the questions, we are meeting with Neve Hines, the co-founder and director of the Western Vascular Institute. So the Western Vascular Institute is a uh, research institution that we've uh, set up. It's a registered charity and its purpose is to promote um, vascular research, um, both looking at types of uh, therapies for vascular disease, but also looking at diagnostics for vascular disease. The other element to the Western Vascular Institute is education. So educating future vascular surgeons and doctors, um, but also educating the public and future patients. As vascular surgeons, we are really, we're plumbers. We look after all the blood vessels that uh, leave the heart and go back to the heart. So the only blood vessels that we don't treat are blood vessels in the brain and blood vessels in the heart. A big contributor to vascular disease is high blood pressure. Today I want to explain what high blood pressure is and how it causes damage to your blood vessels. Here we have a healthy pumping heart next to an unhealthy heart. A healthy heart is stronger and able to pump out more blood with each beat. An unhealthy heart doesn't pump out as much blood as it should, so the body doesn't get enough blood and oxygen. Your blood vessels transport red blood cells with oxygen to important organs in your body. The lining of these blood vessels, known as your endothelium, can be damaged when your blood pressure is too high. This higher force causes what we call shear stress, which can damage the delicate insides of the blood vessels. The resulting tears to the lining can weaken the blood vessels or become pockets where plaque can start to build. As a result of all this pressure, a bulge can form in the blood vessel which, if it pops, can cause serious internal bleeding. This is known as an aneurysm. One way in which we treat aneurysms is with a stent. A stent is a tiny tube made of plastic or metal that is placed in your blood vessel to strengthen it. A surgeon will make a hole in the artery in the groin and insert a very long, thin tube called catheter. The stent is at the tip of the catheter. The catheter is pushed through the blood vessels until it reaches the location of the aneurysm. The stent is released at the aneurysm and stays in the body permanently to reinforce the blood vessel. These images help us to observe the flow of your bloodstream. They are also used to track the progress made from the operation where a stent was placed inside your blood vessels. The key to preventing damage to your vascular system is a healthy heart. So you need to make sure that your heart pumps well and is efficient. There has been lots of, of research done showing that exercise is actually the best form of uh, prevention of heart disease and of vascular disease. Of course, there are other things that are very important, such as not smoking. Smoking is, a very, is very bad for, for vascular health and causes a lot of damage to, to blood vessel linings and also can make the body prone to clotting. Exercise is a great way to lower your blood pressure and reduce your stress levels. In particular, interval training is a great way to strengthen your heart to pump blood more efficiently. Interval training combines short bursts of high intensity exercises with recovery periods of lower intensity exercises. For example, instead of just running at the same pace continuously, with the interval training technique, you would run really hard and fast for 30 seconds, followed by jogging lightly for two minutes. And the good news is you don't even have to run to do interval training, as you can use all sorts of exercises, just vary the intensity. Some great exercises to use in interval training include cycling, jumping rope, and even walking. Exercise signals the release of nitric oxide by the cells lining the insides of the blood vessels, called endothelial cells. This causes the cells that form the blood vessel walls, called smooth muscle cells, to stay relaxed. 
The relaxed, smooth muscle cells widen your blood vessels, which lowers your blood pressure. Keeping your heart strong will lower your blood pressure and help prevent damage to your blood vessels. Your heart works hard to keep you active and capable. Let's show it a little love.